Hey there, my friends. Uh, SG Maniac here. Thought I would go ahead and make another Garage Band video to keep people going. Hopefully, the last one was useful to you. Um, last time, we just made a track using all Apple Loops. So this time, let's go ahead and make a track um, using all MIDI software instruments. So for today, again, you're gonna need your Mac with Garage Band. I recommend headphones. Um, again, if you have a MIDI keyboard. Today would be a cool time to use that. You don't need a MIDI keyboard, and I'll show you how you can um, make cool stuff without a MIDI keyboard, so don't be worried about it. Well, let's go ahead and open it up, um, make a new tr a new project, and we're going to choose a software instrument this time. And immediately, you'll see that we have this very cool-looking, funky, um, classic electric piano here. It gives us a nice little picture. Um, so it's going to give us this, and I have my MIDI keyboard plugged in, so I can just go ahead and very very nicely butcher like a, a little C minor arpeggio um, but right ahead we're gonna see that we have these these built-in sounds over here um, and if this library popped up for you um, if it didn't you can just press Y to open and close this sound library but it should have popped up for you um, we can go ahead and try a different sound notice that these are like both variations of a Rhodes um, and if you don't know what a Rhodes is, it's really, really dope, and you should look that up. Um, but these are all, like, emulations of real instruments, right? So we're going to get some different things. I can take it down an octave or two. Notice that each one of these has kind of its own little flavor. And if we want to get really different, we could go to a different category. So if you're watching and you're like, oh, well, I'm sad. I don't have a MIDI keyboard. I'm not going to be able to make this stuff. Don't be worried. I've made so much music um, using software instruments without a MIDI keyboard. This is what you do. Press Command K, and you're going to get this cool little keyboard here. Um, and <laughs> again, it's not ideal, but what you can do, and I've honestly done this so much that I've picked up kind of how to do this, but you can use this. Right now, I'm playing uh, on my actual laptop keyboard. So you can definitely do that. Um, again, not as ideal as using a MIDI keyboard because this um, kind of digital keyboard does not um, actually capture note velocity. So like, I can play things really softly on my MIDI keyboard, or I can play them really loud. Uh, on this little guy here, they're all going to be the same exact velocity. So you're not going to kind of capture that extra dimension of musicality there. But you know what? If you're just trying to mess around and have fun, it's pretty cool. So uh, I'll go ahead and I can even leave this open. Let's make a beat. Let's freaking do it, Shaggy. So um, I love to start beats. I'm feeling like a drum beat today. So I'm going to go over onto electronic drum kits. Um, ooh, yeah. Let's see. Oh, that's totally wacky. Let's try trapdoor. Yeah, exactly. I'm feeling like a... What tempo is that? I'm gonna go up here and change the tempo. Let's try like 100. Um, metronome, yeah, sounds about right. Um, I'm gonna press C. Oh wait, I gotta get rid of my keyboard. Press C to loop it. Um, let me change this so you guys can see it on the keyboard. No, oh, there we go. So you can actually see what I'm playing here if you follow along on my little keyboard guy. And then here's what we're going to do. This Last time we only used loops. This time we're going to make our own kind of music using these instruments. So I'm going to press R, and I'm going to record myself playing this beat. Two, three, yeah. It's actually a little faster than I want. 95. Nice. So you heard um, there were definitely some mistakes in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at this. This is called MIDI, if you're not familiar with it. Um, it's not actually an audio file. Each of these little bleeps and bloops here is like a different note that I just played. And what I can do is after I've played it, I could go in here and correct everything that I missed. Um, and you don't always want to do this. Sometimes it like takes kind of the humanity out of your music. But for the sake of this exercise, I'll show you. I can t perfectly align everything on the musical grid 
if I, if I highlight everything by pressing Command A, I can go over here and time quantize it so that everything lines up perfectly with the 16th note. And one more thing I just noticed, listen to this part right here. One of these hi-hats right there is a little bit short in length. You can even visually see it right here. So what I'm going to do is I can go in here and correct this, drag it out a little more. And now what I'm seeing is this kind of, there's kind of two bars here. There's this longer green bar, and then there's this internal light green bar. That signifies the velocity. So notice the velocity on this one is really low, which is why we're not really hearing it. So let me crank that up, make it about even with the others. Nice. And this is another way you can actually make music. What I want now is, um, you know, without using a MIDI keyboard, I'm going to just, I kind of want like a, instead of, I really want that subdivision. So I'm going to hold option and I'm going to click on all of these notes that I've selected and drag them over and it's going to duplicate all of those notes. So let's hear it. Nice. I like that. Uh, I want it to be, I don't want it to be like, t -t 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 -t. that's perfectly straight. I want it to be what we call like swing, swung. So I want it to be a little more, t -t 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 but luckily we have an option for that here. I can go down here and select a swing and it kind of starts A is like a not a very noticeable swing. And I'm just, by the way, I'm just quantizing the hi-hat here, but now notice what happens if I do a swing F, it's going to be very noticeable. That's like a Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. So I want like, maybe, let's try C. Maybe even B, honestly. Yeah, just very slight, not noticeable. That's what I'm looking for. Cool, so I like that. I'm happy with that. Um, now what I'm going to do is just double click below our trapdoor to create a new virtual instrument. Let's add some freaking... I don't know, let's try some chords. Very jargon jazzy. Let's go ahead and create like this, some funky, silky smooth stuff. So again, uh, I'm going to click on this, press L to loop it. I'm going to go back and let's record some organ chords. I kind of heard I was like trying to decide um, what chords I was playing as I was playing them and I found one that I really liked at the end there but what I can do now I don't even have to replay it I can just go into the MIDI and kind of correct it um, so for those of you musical theorists who want to follow along I got an F minor 9 going on here and then what I was really trying to go for here was a um, G minor like a G minor 7 and I kind of was reaching for that, so I'm going to drag this G back out. Now that's like a G minor seven, and then I have a um, like a C sharp, a C flat nine chord to round it all off. But the first time I didn't play that chord at all. It's like something totally different. So let me go ahead. I'm going to highlight these notes and press Command T to split them off. So now these are all, see how I have this one chord kind of split into its own little section thingy there. Now I'm going to go back over here, split off this chord. This is the chord I want to delete. So I'm going to press delete, grab this chord, hold option, drag it back on over. Nice. So now I have a, a nice funky little chord progression with my organ. Drag this F. I want that F underneath those other chords. Again, that's F minor nine, G minor seven, C flat nine. For those of you who want to follow along with that, loop it. Cool. Let me go ahead and uh, let's try add some bass. I'm gonna go over here to my library of sounds. Let's see what we got. Nice, very. Very beautiful. Might actually try it. I love this kind of like fake upright bass sound. 
Let's try it. I'm actually going to get air on the side of simplicity here. Oh, my computer just glitched. Hang on. Nice, I like that. Um, I'm actually not making music with headphones today um, because my headphones split in half, so I apologize if that just sounds really sad. So, so far I'm pretty happy with this, you know. Definitely kind of, it's a little soulful. I like that organ pad. Let's see if we can mess with this organ pad. So I'm going to click on the track. There's this little knob in the top right, top left that I have active right now. It actually looks like a knob. So I can click this open. And what we can do is we can actually mess with the sound of the instrument. So these are organ draw bars, and I can turn on, do things like turn on the chorus, the key percussion, mess with the actual characteristics of the organ. Let's listen to how, what happens if I do this. See, you notice how that really brings out kind of the upper register of the organ? So I'm thinking right now, these things would be really cool to automate, right? This is like something that you would want to be happening in the middle of your song. So what I can do um, is come over here. Uh, I don't exactly know. Let's see if we can figure out which one corresponds to which. There's 16, so that's the bottom one. So let's start off by automating um, 6UM2. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag this all the way down. So now watch, Let's get, we're automatically automating this little draw bar right here. And to make it a little more pronounced, I'm going to automate another one too. So let's do uh, one and one third. Don't ask me how an organ works, guys. <laughs> I really don't know. But all I know is that automation is cool. Um, and in fact, I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of offset this so that it happens at a little bit of a later time. Um, yeah, I'm liking this. That's already adding like another really cool element to our track, right? Um, and one other thing that I can check out there is if I go back to that screen, organ verb is something that I'm kind of interested in having. For those of you that don't know, reverb is kind of like that. If you're, imagine you're in a big room and you clap and you still have that like, that like follows the clap. That's basically what reverb is. We can throw that on any instrument to really change how it sounds. Notice how it, it sounds like the organ's in like a big loop right now. There's always a compromise to how much reverb you really want to put on something. Let's see how that sounds in the mix. I do like that. Let's add a um, let's add like a Rhodes melody here on this classic electric piano. Nice. Maybe that'll happen like every once in a while. Now let's find a way to loop that. But this one's kind of weird, right? Um, because we want to make sure, I don't really know how long I recorded it, and I want to make sure that it, it lines up and plays at the proper time. Let me bring it down to the mix a little. That sounds good. What I'm really worried about right is right here. 
see it's actually supposed to happen a measure later, right? So what I can do here is just um, extend this loop by one measure, drag drag out our kind of the the original that's being copied in the loop. Yeah, whenever you have a loop where there's MIDI, but there's space, blank space on either the front or the back, you have to be careful because sometimes it's just not going to loop up in the right place. It looks like we're good. So now what I'm really feeling is some sort of funky synth to play our main melody. Um, let's go to synthesizer over here. I'm going to go to lead. Um, let's try retro. That's very interesting. Um, so synthesizers um, actually have some really cool kind of controls here. You'll notice I still have this keyboard, this um, kind of instrument control panel open, which is this knob button up here. And I can really, I can go around and try out all these different presets. Each synthesizer has like a bunch of diff built in presets that the developers gave us. So you notice all these sound really different. And this is all the same synthesizer. But the really cool thing is that maybe like two of them, you can kind of just put it in between two, give you a little best of both worlds, or even between four sounds if you really wanted to. And let's say I don't want any delay or reverb, I just want my synthesizer to be totally dry. Which sounds kind of cool. Maybe a little more what I'm going for. Um, very interesting. But I'm actually going to try another synth. Let's go over here. I know, I know. Do not show this message again. Quit whining at me. I'm trying to, just trying to be a good person. There we go. Listen to that. Uh, except I don't want it to be so dramatic, you know. I just want it to be very um, chill. This is going to be like a very classic West Coast beat. Get ready for this. Let's see. I hope I didn't hype that up. I mean, that's, that is very, like, West Coast. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to make it a little more melodic so that it's not just, like, playing the whole time. Put a little bit of space in the melody. That actually helps it stand out. Um, makes it a much more, like, memorable part of the song. We want people to be able to sing our melodies, um, you know, especially if you're trying to make anything that's remotely pop music at all. Let's see what we can do. with that that's that's a fine melody um, and if you're wondering how I came up with that melody so quickly um, the reason is is because our we're going back to our chord progression that I came up with um, it starts on F minor so the key of this beat is kind of F minor so all this um, synthesizer lead is is it's just a, a riff on the F minor scale So it's starting on C, and that's the F minor scale. Those are the only notes I'm using there. You hear that organ kind of coming up there, being a little brighter. And the last thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to go back to our loop section. Oh, clicked on the run button. Go back to our loop section, and uh, I'm going to throw in a little bit of percussion. Make this a little more uh, make this a little more grooving. Let's hear that from the beginning. I'm also gonna put in some um, some shaker right here. Uh, not that one. I don't like that little flare at the end. Yeah my computer is really working hard. It's almost time for a new computer. If you catch my drift. You know what I mean? Santa, if you're watching this, I know it's July, but 
Let's get your work cut out for you. Maybe some maracas right there after we hear the melody two times. Um. Oh yeah. And the cool thing, I forgot to, I neglected to mention one of the coolest things about MIDI. Let's say I'm like, okay, we're going full 70s soul mode. This kind of trap door drum thing isn't really cutting it anymore. Let's go, I'm going to press Y. I'm like, okay, I'm going to try out some new sounds. I can just go over here and totally change the sound of this MIDI. Um, let's just try a regular drum set. You know, you might find it, you might not find it. Sometimes if you're having trouble hearing something, the best thing to do is just bring everything else down. It kind of hurts. I know it hurts to turn things down because you're like, this is jamming. But you can always bring them back up at the end. You can always increase the whole volume of the piece up here, or better yet, in mixing and mastering. So bringing things down is never a bad idea. See now, my drum set is kind of like the proper volume. We want those drums to be banging. Maybe pan the congas. on my last video that you guys can't actually hear when I pan things, but trust me that it sounded good. Anyways, I'm feeling really good about this track. Um, I hope you learned something about making beats here. I'm probably going to keep up these videos a little bit because they're really fun. Um, stay tuned for the next one. And uh, yeah, peace. I hope you make some cool beats with your MIDI stuff. See you later.